Okay, hi everyone. Um, before we get into the nuts and bolts of TFD, uh, I just wanted to go over a few uh, ideas uh, about testing um, and setting up scenes for testing purposes. Now, what I'm going to tell you is by no way a definitive um, technique. It's, it's just a technique I tend to use uh, and there's quite a few options you can play around with. But, uh, but I think uh, it will save you a lot of time uh, in the long run if you sort of get a grasp of, of these concepts. Um, if you've been using the program for some time, you probably know what we're going to be talking about. If this is your first time using TFD, uh, this hopefully will save you a lot of headaches. All right, as we discussed earlier um, in the instructory tutorial, um, all TFD simulations need a container. So uh, we can create a container, and we know this is called Turbulence FD Container. Um, we can hit new to take him out a new cache. I say don't worry about mine being 017 because I've, yours will be 001. Um, that's the folder and that's the individual cache within that folder. Okay, So um, what we've got there is a initial container. Okay, Now let's, um, let's add in a, an, an emitter into this container. I'll do some settings. Um, Nothing important, nothing crazy here, just, just enough to, to get us going. Okay, so we can add a turbulence tag, uh, and as we said before, by default temperature is on, so we might as well use temperature uh, as our emitter. Um, right, now, what we could do is simulate away here with this one, and we wait 10 seconds, whatever it's going to take. Okay, 5 seconds. And now we decide we want to go down here. Uh, we want to adjust the turbulence and see what that looks like. Um, and we get something quite different. But instead of going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and forgetting what our original setting was here, let's for instance say we try at 85 and do a test. Um, so now we've done three tests, zero, but what was the one in the middle? We can't remember because we've moved on to 85. I know it was 50, but it can get confusing. Let me show you a much better sort of workflow of doing this. Um, what we can do is Control G. Sorry, my mouse again giving me hassles. Alt G. Sorry, not Control. Alt G um, to group the the emitter with the container. We can now Control drag and drop. And we've got a copy because it's, it's given it number one. And we can move this one across. We've now got two identical containers, okay, um, with two identical emitters. Now, in the first container, if we look at the uh, cache, we're, we're going to turbulence cache is 017, and we're going into cache file one. And this one is going to be identical because it's... Um, it's just a copy, okay? Now, we've got two choices here. We can either create a completely new um, simulation cache for this one, delete it, or better still, make life a lot simpler. What we can do for, for the second one is add in a new cache. So we've got the one folder. This is our project folder. This is today's project, which is 17th of the second Monday. That's our folder. Within it are, are these little projects, caches, okay? Um, so we've got our first one, uh, which is Cache 01, and know how I click there, it, it highlights Cache 01. Now we've got our second one, which is because I made it new, is now highlighting Cache 02. So we've got two completely different caches, um, and I'll show you those in a minute. In fact, I'll, uh, I might as well show you them now. Okay, if we go back, remember we had Cache 17. So now we've got two completely separate um, caches. And this one doesn't have any data in it because we haven't simmed anything into it, okay? So um, now we've got that in mind. What we can do is, if we look at our first container, let's go back uh, and reset the turbulence to zero, uh, and we'll simulate that. Now, bear in mind, we can only simulate one container at a time, so one container has to be selected. If we try to do it without one selected, it, it seems to have defaulted out before it would error out and say you must uh, select a container. 
Um, so there we go, there's the first one. And it's going, as we said, to cash 01. We can now go to the second one, which is going to go to cash 02, and we can do some testing. All right, we've got it set at, let's say, 175, and leave that at uh, 25. Um, now sim that. Now notice this one is being picked up. It's not simulating, it's just picking up the data that's already written to disk. Um, and we'll have a look, that, that took us 11 seconds. We could actually even switch this container off. No, it doesn't exist. Uh, we can start sim again, see if it's any faster. I don't think for a, a simple scene like this it will make too much of a difference. But certainly for larger scenes you'll, you'll see something. Okay, it's gone down to 5 seconds from 11 seconds, so it's halved it. Okay, uh, We can switch this one back on. And now we've got two sims. Uh, and we can render uh, if we output all frames. And let's get it something a bit smaller. Um, we can now render both of those at the same time. Now, that is generally how I would do my testing. I would set up one, two, three, four maybe three or four containers um, and adjust each one uh, and then render them and you, you can now see exactly what your um, adjustments are made um, you're not having to remember now there's one little trick that we need to add to that to make it um, of actual use uh, and that is to give ourselves some data and there's several ways of doing this you can put a a Motex spline or an ordinary spline under there with an extrude uh, and write down your data. You could in fact link it by Expresso, so you could have an Expresso set up whereby this information is being ported into the actual text um, spline, so it's updating that way. But um, what is actually an easier way of doing this is uh, just to use the HUD. So we can add to HUD. Okay. Now if you're not familiar with HUD, um, it's, it's, it's almost like an Espresso going to a, a Motex. Um, this updates live. If you look at the, the data here, box of size 1, as I adjust that, that, that adjusts, OK? Um, if you want to move the HUD, you need to press Control and then bring it down, OK? And we can do the same with this one. Um, this is container and this is container. We could rename them. Let's, let's try this one and rename it. Uh, if I can find the rename. Let's see if I can basically let's try and rename it here. Let's rename this one to one. Okay. Uh, now here we can again go into the voxel settings and add to HUD. Uh, one second. Okay, so this has come up as Turbulence FD1. We can bring this one down. Now, we've lost the first one. So what we need to do when we, when we, when we do these is we right-click them, Show Always. Uh, and this one, right-click, Show Always. Okay, so even when they're not selected as shown, and we can see that we've got uh, Container and TFD1, okay, so we're distinguishing between the two. The problem is when we render, we don't say anything. Well, we can cure that simply by um, uh, here, render, show, render, show, render. By the way, if you're not getting your HUD there, but uh, do have a look in your um, uh, project settings, or viewport settings, sorry, view settings, and make sure HUD um, you've got what you need working here. You've got you've got a HUD active. Um, it, it should be by default. It should be okay. View, okay. Now, now what happens is when we hit them, we should have got the uh, the HUD to run. Uh, bear with me. I'll see. What, oh, I forgot something. No, um, we, we've set them to render, but we'll, what we need to do is go into the settings here. Uh, options. Render HUD. Okay, so now we've got the HUD up. So when I hit a render, HUD shows. Um, so what does this do? Basically, it means that now we've got a visual 
uh, information. And don't forget, the, these are HUDs, so they're, uh, they're live two-way connections. So I can go in here and use the slider and adjust settings here. Um, that's for that container. So uh, it's useful in that sense, you don't have to keep going back and forth, but more useful for this scenario. Um, not too happy about what that uh, HUD's doing there. No, it was fine, it was just the, um, the glitching with the... Uh, let me, let me go back and move these huts. I don't know why they're overlapping. Um, should be overlapping here. Output. Let's put it back to uh, default. See what I get now. Yeah, um, for some reason, while it's rendering, it's not sure. I think it's because the HUD is the last thing that is shown as a render. So it's rendering the, the TFD first, and then, then rendering the HUD. So or obviously, the, the buckets are taking time to get around there anyway. Um, but the point being, if we stop here now, um, we should have our data here. Okay, so play around with the size of, the, of your rendering screen, but the, but the point is now for you could you could just put this on a net as an example, um, and people could see quite clearly what is the difference between these two. Well, it's not really of any use to us because we're not actually showing the correct information. Uh, so we can add some more HUDs to this to show us what what we're doing. Uh, we're on the first container, which is that one there, um, and we can add that to a HUD. Okay, and uh, we can bring it down. Now we might not even want to see the whole of this. We might just want to see the turb intensely. So we can show display uh, the object, forget the object, and just put on um, the detail that we want. And again, we can do the same. Whoops. We need to set that as show always and show render and we can do the same for this one it may seem a bit of a nuisance at the moment to start it off but uh, i'll tell you it will save you a lot of time when you're trying to compare so control and click to, oh my mousey is a pain bring it down right click show always right click show render right click display we get the object and we'll just tidy these up a bit and we can see now what's going on here we've got the same box sizes but we've got different turbulence intensities and now when we render uh, that information should come up so um, there's two things i think we, we i've got through across here um, the first one is that we can have multiple containers um, for testing purposes and for many other reasons which we'll get into later uh, and the second thing is we can use the HUD or you can use text splines linked up with Expresso perhaps but uh, the HUD's probably the most logical way to do it so that uh, you get a visual representation of what's going on um, and you could store this sort of stuff yourself away um, as a sort of a, an ad addendum, addendum, is that a word? Addendum as an add-on to your help uh, files so uh, you, you yourself realize okay so that's what this setting does uh, this is the sort of effect we're going to get from it um, there's no point in me rendering that any further let's just make sure that it came out I oh, can see that quite clearly it's not an issue here is it um, by the way in, inside the program these are keyframe well I think um, uh, it's it's this HUD is actually quite useful it's, uh, it's a very two-way system it means basically that if you've got a very, very complicated hierarchy, um, instead of having to, to fluff around through um, a massive great um, object manager trying to find a particular setting, um, you can just put that setting on a HUD uh, and it's, you can have it here or there. Um, you can have the, the spiders, sliders and what have you. 
but for our purposes uh, it, it's perfect for testing so that's just a, um, a little one-off um, here I won't really go into this because I think you all know you should know how to set up a menu uh, if we go into Windows menus uh, customize menus sorry it's not that one I always forget how I do um, customize palettes okay if you, you pop down here and uh, you want to be looking for your TFD. I think here TFD now it might be under turbulence. Okay, it's a turbulence container. So um, you can take that, drag, and drop it there. I've now got a, another turbulence container. I didn't really want that. I've already got one. Um, but you load up whichever ones you want along here. Okay, um, and come out of that. And, and it's fixed, okay. Um, and you would save that as a startup layout. Um, let well, when I close this down, I'll show you that that this new one I've added here shouldn't be there because I haven't saved it as a startup layout. So I create my I create my icons. That's for my um, simulation window. That creates a new container. That's contract. These are separate things. Uh, not really nothing to do with TFD. Um, there's a variety of, of things here in TFD that you may want to put up there. Uh, perhaps help even check for updates but these are the two that I'm, I'm using all the time I want a container when I open my project uh, and then I want to start simulating so I put them there um, that's for ease of use okay right I'm um, gonna leave this one it's a sweet and simple uh, I don't really think there's much more I want to tell you uh, I will be doing a lot of work here with multiple sims so um, if there's anything I've forgotten here we can we can we'll be able to look at it in, in future tutorials but uh, this is basically the idea of setting up multiple sims um, you can have as many of these as you want uh, and as I say you can render them all at the same time but uh, for simming I, I do suggest you switch them off the ones that you're not going to be using because um, as we saw it, it doubled the time because it was having to not only was having to write to disk to, to for, for the new sim that was being created and read from disk to display it it was also having to read from disk the uh, the original sim so it was too much of an overhead okay we'll leave it with that and uh, we'll move on in the next tutorial